we spoke very much about community as being the underlying uh, move in religious life and found that uh, it gives strength to all that we do during the day. Also, with, uh, in looking back, many of our ministries were in institutional uh, settings, and today we see a shift where we're responding to the changing needs of the people that we see and the uh, needs in the world. So that is a, a big shift in religious life. I like to think about it as salt of the earth, where if salt is in a container, you can see the salt, but today we sprinkle the salt wherever we are, so it brings flavor to wherever we are and brings our charism <clears throat> of love and compassion and unity among others. We talked a lot about prayer and prayer being central in our lives and just that deep sense of being contemplatives in action and of moving from that space where contemplation is the is the central aspect of who we are and then that moves us out um, and just thinking about how important that is because it's not just for our own sakes but for the life of the world that we engage in such a deep practice of prayer and from that we talked about our own practices like order of the house where we're trying to listen in such a deep way that we're paying attention to where we're being communally led and really paying attention to like where will that lead us in terms of our viability in terms of the gift that we have to offer the world in our charism and we talked about believing that religious life is bigger than any one of our congregations and that we have a responsibility to nurture and nourish religious life so that it exists as a possibility for um, for anyone who wants to join us. Well, we may have used different words. Our, our, our reflection is very similar in the sense of looking at community being a, a very uh, big witness. And it's not just a witness to the world. It's this all of us around the world, as sisters of St. Joseph, living out of the same vision and charism, no matter what we do. It's about the vision of, of, and the charism. And that's all rooted in our relationship with God and the growing intimacy with God that each one of us has personally. And, and then moving that into the communal reflection of that which then brings state of the heart and order of the house together to deepen our relationships with one another in the house, which also then prepares us to be in that relationship with the dear neighbor. And then we see that uh, the prayer ministry community flows into this whole form of life and who we are as a person, as a, um, a witness in the world, as in the way we live our lives as women religious. And so this our, our growing ability to artic discover, articulate, and live out of the charism, no matter what the cost of that is, is a, a growing edge for us in that I think that we're doing quite nicely, and yet still have, there's always a new response. And, and it's always about discerning what it is that's our future, but also discerning what is it the spirit and the dear neighbor is calling us to do next. Um, and in all this is really all about relationship and the way we live together and witness and being God's great love in the world. And being a countercultural witness of God's great love in the world when the world seems to be falling apart around us, we have this positive hope that then moves us forward. What's important to us is intentional community, and some of us said intentional life-giving community, joyful, unifying love, dialogue and deep listening, being supported and challenged to be our best selves, creating safe spaces, places to process feelings, being rooted in prayer with the Trinity, being contemplatives in action, being supported so that we can take risks, deepening relationships, state of the heart, order of the house, and our generous promises are very important to us. Us being countercultural as women religious in the world today is also very important to us discerning the needs of our time and taking action. And we believe the future is now and we build it together. <laughs> so as I look at all that you shared and reflected on in this short time, um, the only thing that I can think of is how lucky, how lucky I am to be here with all of you and that we're all together. Um, because as you said, Jane, it's like, you know, it's a different flavor, different words on the same thing. And that's what brings us all together. 
um, is this shared common value of being rooted in prayer and in God. Um, and I think of something that Dolores Clerico uh, said to us in our reflection on mission and ministry, of we are women who are drawn, not driven. Um, it is that rooted place of God that draws us ever closer to one another and to our community and to anybody that needs us. Um, and I think that that is the real spirit of who we are and that we do that together, especially this idea of um, we challenge one another and we support one another to bring that forth into the world. Um, and so uh, thank you for, uh, for going through that process uh, with us. Um, I think it's meaningful. And I think that that's, you know, uh, looking at um, people asking us all the time, like, what's the future of religious life? And it's like, you know, we live religious life today, and that is the future. We're living it right now. The, who we are, how we live our lives, tells us what the future is. And I think it's a future full of life. So at this time, we've, as a group, we have discerned, we have reflected, and we have prayed about what we're going to present to you next. And this came out of something that we was part of an invitation, a project that we did of religious life in the 21st century. And so what was the assignment was to write a letter, what would we have wanted to say to the CSSJ Federation individually. And then following that week, we were invited again to write a collaborative letter to the CSJ Federation, what would we would like to say. So this is a place that we find raw, vulnerable, and a place of our heart that we're, put, we're willing to just read and put out there. So bear with us. We are going to just be reading it. We are not going to print it, we're not going to pass it out, so we're just, this is why this is being recorded. My dear sisters, we are writing this letter to say that we need each other. We need the help and wisdom of the entire Federation. Show us the way through your example. We know we are new and inexperienced in religious life, but we desire to grow together, to have you share your wisdom with us and to have us share our wisdom with you. We all make mistakes. Be open to ours as we are open to yours. We desire to hold sacred space so that we each can flourish and be open to live in continuous freedom together. We are more diverse than ever. Generationally, culturally, and connected in ways never before seen. In many ways, it can feel like we are strangers in a strange land. In this land, things like transparency, non-violent communication, non-judgment, acceptance, and the call to be with our own prejudices is greatly needed. Need. Along with this diversity, we are also called to be more flexible, to hold things lightly, and to transform for each other and the needs of the world. We are a small voice in a very large federation, and at times it feels that we are not heard disregarded and misunderstood. We are asking for and willing to be vulnerable truth tellers and empathetic listeners. We desire to be collaborative and dream into the future together. 
help us to live radical, authentic, and transformative lives. This begins with intentional, life-giving community. A community who is not afraid to say sorry or to forgive, who takes seriously the call to be rooted in a relationship with the Trinity. This is the foundation of what gives us life. We desire also to take a long, loving look at what is needed in our world. If we take seriously our commitment to intentional and transformative community, we can bring this fruit into the world. There are many social and ecological justice needs from the local level to the world. How does this congregation of the great love of God bridge the gap of these injustices? Who are the people and communities that we need to collaborate with invite into our circles, and stand to help meet these needs. As Pope Francis calls us, how can we be a field hospital and what wounds do we need to tend to? The last thought that we would like to leave you with is how can we trust each other? As Teresa Maya said in the book, in our own words, while we younger sisters need to risk trusting others our elders need to risk entrusting their legacy into our hands. We commit to honoring your wisdom, your stories, and all that you have done and can continue to do to bring us to the present. We ask that you also trust our wisdom and know that we are capable and loving enough to collaborate in bringing our charism into the future. With love, Jennifer, Chizuru, Tram, Sarah, and Sally. So that concludes the letter, and we just wanted to thank you all for your participation today here in this room, and for you all uh, watching at home. We invite you as well to reflect on that question. What in religious life is meaningful for you today in this time? And we also invite you to share that with a friend too.